Hi, I'm Sam Edmonds and I'm a consultant for Fox Rage and Salmo. Now one of my favourite types of lures to use for targeting pike, perch, zander, chub and other species as well are creature baits. Now creature baits are essentially crayfish imitations. They can imitate other things as well, but they often have lots of appendages and it helps them sink really slowly through the water and they can work really well in venues where you can find signal crayfish. Now a lot of my local rivers, gravel pits, lakes, canals, they have lots and lots of signal crayfish and they're one of the main prey items for the fish that we're going to be targeting today. So today I've set myself a challenge to try and catch a pike, a perch and a chub on the new rage critters. Me and my dad, we've been using them on a lot of our local rivers recently. We've caught some nice perch on them as well and I've been really impressed with them. They've got quite a bit, a slightly different action to most other creature baits. Most creature baits are quite bulky in their profile. The rage ones are nice and slim and they fall really nicely through the water. Now we're fishing on one of my local rivers today and the conditions looked absolutely spot on. It's the first time I've fished it for quite a while actually because we've had so much rain recently and it's made the river really coloured and dirty but the, it's fine down now, the water level's gone down and it's looking absolutely fantastic. So I'm confident we'll catch a few fish today. Now today I'm going to show you how I rig the Rage Critters. Um, I have multiple ways of rigging them. Sometimes I fish them on a Texas rig, sometimes I fish them on a Cheb rig, a jig head. Um, you can even fish them on a drop shot. So there's lots of different ways you can rig them. And today we're likely to catch pike, hopefully some perch, hopefully a chub as well and if we're really lucky we might even get a trout so I'm confident that we should get at least three species and hopefully we'll catch a few fish. When I'm fishing small rivers like this, I often try and make plenty of casts to slack areas as this is a place where you can often find pike, perch and chub sitting, especially when you've had a flood or a lot of coloured water going through like we have done recently. The reason you often find fish sitting in the slack water is because they're using less energy rather than sitting in the strong current in the middle of the river. It's often where you find bait fish as well. Oh, I'm not sure if I had a bite there. I did have a bite, it's just ripped the curl tail off. <laughs> I'll just put another creature bait on and then I'll make another cast out there. Well, I've just had a bite in that slack water over the back there. I think it was probably a pike because it tore the soft bait up and it actually took one of the appendages off. So I've had to change and put another one of the quitters on. So I'm going to have a quick cast over there and see whether it's up for taking this. And if not, I'm going to target some of the other slack areas in other parts of the river, notably areas over the back there and also just down in the margins here. Oh, <laughs> just had another take again. I think it was probably the same fish. I hope it hasn't torn up the, the soft bait again. So what's happened here is that the fish has taken the soft bait and it has actually torn the front of it. Um, so that's a good sign that that was a definite bite. I'm just going to re-rig that back on there and then I'll make another cast and see whether it takes again. There we go. <laughs> a 
Most of the time when using creature baits I'm targeting perch and chub but on a lot of the venues I fish there's quite a few small jack pike like this one and you have to be prepared for that so I often use trace wire instead of fluorocarbon when I'm using creature baits as you never know when a jack pike might come along. Well I've caught a couple of fish on this iridescent colour already but I've decided that I think I'm going to have a change of colour and probably put a slightly darker version on, maybe in a brown, because I think it would help stand out in this slightly coloured water a little bit more so than this iridescent colour. So, but if the, if the water begins to clear during the day, then what we'll do is that we'll change to this iridescent colour and give that a go as well. Well I've just moved a little way upstream, it's a very narrow stretch of river this, but don't be put off by the width of the river. This has got a nice bit of depth to it, there's a nice pool here, there's some roots where the fish can hide over the back, and it can be a really good place. You often get chub sitting over the back there, sometimes perch as well, and I've caught pike out of this little bit too, so I'm going to have a few casts and see whether we, we get any bites. There we go. A couple of casts after. Just getting into this swim, and I've got a fish. Not a big one again, but it's nice to get a bit of action on a wet day like this. <clears throat> well, here we go, another micro pike. <clears throat> this was on the darker coloured critter after we recently made that change. Obviously not the biggest pike you'll ever see, a very small one, but it does go to show that even in tiny little rivers like this, you can often find fish and often get bites. Well we were just about to move swims actually and try another part of the river and I wasn't sure whether I had a bite or not but I've just wound in the creature bait and I definitely have. Um, it's exposed the hook and not only that it's taken one of the claws off my creature bait as well so that's a bit of a pain, I've got to change bait now. Sometimes I'm not 100% sure if I've had a bite, especially when you know, you're know you fishing on a pressured stretch of river, there's been a lot of people fishing it, the bites can be very delicate at times, but when you're winding your bait and you look at that and you see that the hook's been exposed, and even more of a telltale sign is when a couple of the appendages have been taken off, that means you've definitely had a bite. That means there is a fish down there, so I'm going to quickly change creature bait, put another one on and have another cast down there, see if I can get it. Oh, here we go. There we go. That's our target species. We've caught a perch. It's not a big one. In fact, the, uh, the lure's actually come out. So that saves me unhooking it. This fish took the rage critter right over the back there in those roots. That's a definite area where you'd expect to find perch, especially at this time of year. The creature baits that we're using today are available in the new Texas Critter Kits. Um, they come equipped with three Texas rigs and three creature baits as well. There's multiple ways that you can rig up these creature baits. You can rig them on these Texas rigs, which come in the pack. You've got the cone weights, a 2-0 offset hook, and the creature baits like so. Um, but if you're fishing on a venue like we are today, where there's quite a few pike, you will need to use a wire trace. So this is my own tied up version here. That's using 17 pound wire trace 
with your comb weight here and then you've got a 2 0 offset hook and the crayfish rig behind it. That's for fishing in venues where I know that they're, they're a pike and that I know that we've got a good chance of catching one as well. There are other ways you can rig the creature baits as well. You can rig them on a normal jig head. This is rigged on a 10 gram 3.0 jig head. It's great for casting out and fishing at long range. The other way I like to rig the creature baits, which is what I've been doing for most of today, is by rigging them on a Cheb rig. So I've got a 2.0 offset hook here, and then your Cheb weight, which is clipped at the front of the hook here. Now I can put a heavier weight on depending on whether I'm fishing in a strong current, whether I'm fishing in deeper water, um, or I can use a lighter weight, which I am today. This is a three gram weight, and it's perfect for fishing on small, very slow flowing rivers. Well, we've just had a change of location. We've moved slightly upstream, and I'm just having a few casts by this bridge here. Bridges are fantastic places for perch to hide under. There's lots of cover there. It's dark underneath. You often get bait fish hiding under there as well. So it's definitely worth having a few casts by a bridge if there's one about, because that's a very good place for perch to hide. There are a few different ways you can fish this creature bait, but the way I'm going to be fishing it today is casting tight to overhanging trees, bushes, roots, or any deep banks, and waiting for the creature bait to fall to the bottom. As that creature bait's falling down, what it's going to be doing is creating tons of vibration and lots of movement. And where you've got these overhanging trees and roots, this is often where you're going to find the fish, so you've often got a very good chance of getting a bite there. Now the way I retrieve it is I'm keeping the rod tip up at about a 10 o'clock angle and that's just for sensitivity really and it also helps you look at the line and detect for bites as well. And I'm just lifting the rod tip six inches or so, letting it fall back to the bottom again and then just continuing that retrieve all the way back to my feet, winding up the slack line as I do. And as I say, make sure you wind it all the way back to the margins because that's often a place where you get bites as well. A lot of the bites when fishing on this river you'll get on the drop when you cast into places where you can find fish. They're the bites I like the most. When I'm cast into spots such as overhanging trees, likely looking spots that will hold fish, I keep the rod tip up at about a 10 o'clock angle whilst the lure's falling down, but I lower the rod tip as the lure's falling. This is because if I was to hold the rod at a 10 o'clock angle whilst the lure's falling and I've just cast out, the lure would fall back towards me. Whereas if I lower the rod tip at the, at the same time the lure's falling, that lure's going to be falling straight down and it's going to fall closer to the fish. If not, even go under the bank where it's undercut. So that's a very important tip. A lot of people are put off by Texas rigging. They think it looks quite complicated, but actually it's very easy. Um, we'll be using the 2 0 offset hooks. And what you want to do is push the point of the hook through the nose of the soft bait and come out about a quarter of an inch underneath. And then what I like to do sometimes is wet the hook because it makes the soft bait slide round easier. And then you slide the soft bait round until it goes over the double bend and then mark by eye where the hook is going to sit on the soft bait and we know it's going to look like that once it's rigged up so I'll push the point of the hook straight through the body now these rage critters they've got a groove in the back and when you push the hook round it will sit perfectly in that groove and what I like to do to make it totally weedless is to just skin hook the point of the hook and when a fish grabs that it pushes the soft bait's body down, exposes the hook and you'll hook the fish. Now rigging a soft bait on a Texas hook like this is ideal for fishing on a small 
very snaggy river. It's absolutely full of tree roots, branches, um, snags, boulders. And when you're fishing Texas style, it will just save you losing so much gear. If I was to use a normal jig head on this river today, um, I would have probably lost quite a bit. But because I'm going to be Texas rigging today, I probably won't lose as much, or hopefully <laughs> won't lose as much gear. Well, here's something a little bit different. It was a really good bite, and uh, I did say earlier on today that we might have a chance of catching a trout, and uh, that's what's happened. It was a really good bite, and uh, I caught it in that weir pool there, and uh, it went a bit crazy. It was, it was a good fight, but um, it's got fantastic markings, and they really like crayfish, brown trout. They'll eat them a lot. And it is possible to catch brownies on creature baits when you're fishing in the rivers around where I live. And here's an example. Oh, it's a nice perch. Oh, yes. Finally caught a nice perch. <laughs> well, I had a few casts in this spot earlier on the way, but I didn't have any bites. And we ventured up river, but we didn't have much going on up there either, just one small pike. But on the way back down, I decided to have a few casts back in this swim. The wind's calmed down a little bit, it's not quite as windy now and the sun's come out and on my third cast I had a good take and it turned out to be this immaculate perch. It's probably just over two pound but it's a fantastic looking fish. There's a really nice fish on the creature bait and this is one of the fish we came out for today and uh, I'm really pleased that I'm able to show you one. I love fishing all kinds of venues. I love fishing reservoirs, rivers, lakes, canals, the sea. But some of my favourite fishing is on tiny rivers and small streams like what we've been fishing today. And the thing I really like about fishing these is that you can travel really lightweight. I can carry all my gear in this tackle vest. I've actually got my unhooking mat in the back as well. In the front, I can get to pliers, um, other essential bits, jig heads. I can also carry some of my favourite soft baits in there as well. And it's just really nice being able to travel light and fish light too. Um, the rod I'm using today is the Linear Light Spin. It's seven foot and it can cast up to seven to 21 grams. Um, it's quite a pokey rod for a small river like this, but when you hook into a big fish, it gives you plenty of power to set the hooks and also to get them away from many of the snags that all, are all along this river. I've got a 2,500 prism reel that's spooled with 15 pound Pro X8 braid and this is a really nice setup for fishing small rivers and small streams like this. We've made a move further downstream and the weather has just gone mental. I mean we've, we've had all weathers today, we've had sun, we've had rain, we've had sleet and now we've got hail. So. Uh, Glad I put my waterproofs on today. I'm just having a few casts on this sharp bend here because what's happened over time is that the current has pushed into this bank here and it's made it undercut and very deep as well. That's a telltale spot for a chub or a perch. When fishing on these tiny rivers, you've got to cast your lure into every nook and cranny. When the fishing's hard like this, You've got to try and land the lure right in front of their noses.
Well, the river's started to colour up now since the rain we had this morning and um, it might have switched the chub on because I've just come into this swim, I've made a cast tight to the bank over the other side, had three jigs and then bang, had an absolute slam of a take. And um, often when you get really powerful takes like that, it's a good sign that it's probably a chub. And uh, sure enough it was, and uh, we've got one. <laughs> there we go. That's gone, that's walloped it. I'm just gonna unhook him. Well today we set out to catch three species on the critters, pike, perch and chub, and we've done it. And not only that, we've also managed a bonus trout as well. So four species in the same day. Um, that really shows how well creature baits can work on these small rivers. So if you've got a local river that you can fish and you fancy giving it a go, try the creature baits next time and hopefully you should catch a few fish on them.